Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. Here we are enjoying our morning live show where we take a look at headlines from our city, from our state, from our country. We take a look at your comments, your ideas, your suggestions. We combine all this information and put it to good use as we try to connect with our city, Puerto Vallarta, with each other as a community of English-speaking locals. As always, it is a pleasure to get together with you. And today, Monday, January 9th, is no exception. We have all kinds of interesting news today with the Bidens and Justin Trudeau visiting Mexico. We have news about Puerto Vallarta and how we fared during the December vacation period. We have news from Zapal, Let the Caca Water Flow, we have interesting articles that um, I came across during the weekend, and um, and we have a little report on our outing on Saturday night to see and hear and enjoy the wonderful Zoe Lewis, who's back in town from Provincetown, and, um, and it should be a fun broadcast. About you, well, I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. I had a great weekend. I spent a lot of time just chilling particularly yesterday. Yesterday was a great day to just stay home and, and relax. Um, as always, as always, a great welcome to those of you that are watching live for the first time. If that is the case, please feel free to write the word new in your comment. We'll give you a nice little welcome. And of course, if there's something really important on your mind uh, that you wish to share with us, if you add a capital letter Q at the beginning of your comment, then we will not miss it during the broadcast. So, ah, coffee in hand, let us get started. Mmm, yummy. Okay, well, this is great news. Several local and national news outlets have reported that Puerto Vallarta was a national tourist destination that scored most tourists this past December. And if you are wondering, no, we did not reach that 100% occupancy number that so many local authorities love to tout. But our 81.8% occupancy at local hotels was not shabby, and it was the highest number throughout the country, and it was also 3% higher than the same period last year. So yay for Puerto Vallarta. Other numbers in the article reveal that the state of Jalisco during this past month welcomed approximately 1.2 million visitors in its main tourism destinations, which of course include Guadalajara, Puerto Vallarta, Chapala, and Costa Alegre, resulting in about 2,800 million pesos in revenue. So it's good to see that our state had a good month last month. Now, our friends at Zapal, not content with the work that has been done so far, are going again, are going at it again, working on Basilio Vadillo at the intersection of Pino Suarez. 
The organization has announced interruption in vehicular traffic in the area, advising drivers to seek alternate routes. The work started this morning and will continue for three days. Now, what is SEAPA doing there? Well, they are widening their pipes because there's a lot of new condo buildings, all of which, of course, are being designed and built to look exactly like a typical Mexican fishing village uh, should look like, and thus turning Emiliano Zapata into, oh, such a charming destination. Um, please know that that last part of the statement was just fake news that mean absolutely nothing. Although I will say that some local paper the other day described Versailles as the trendiest place in Puerto Vallarta, and that just gave me the shivers in the worst way. Ah, gotta love those modern condos in Emiliano Zapata. But what do I know? Um, what is next? <laughs> what is next? I got totally distracted. The president of the United States, Joe Biden, has arrived in Mexico City with First Lady Jill Biden to participate in the North American Summit with Canada Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and President López Obrador. Joe Biden's first order of business was to meet with the staff of the United States Embassy and thank them for their continued work representing the United States in Mexico. And yes, he landed on the new airport where he was welcomed by President López Obrador. And yes, President López Obrador said in his morning press conference that President Biden said that the new airport was lovely. Meanwhile, First Lady Jill Biden, who arrived separately landing at the old airport and was greeted there by President López Obrador's wife, Beatriz Gutiérrez Müller, she scored major browning points by making a visit to Mexico City's Basílica de Guadalupe, and this was her first stop in a series of cultural visits on her separate agenda. So my first reaction to all of this is, where is my future like husband? And why aren't the newspapers talking about him? Well, I did do a little bit of digging. I did do uh, a little bit of digging in Prime Minister Trudeau's agenda for today. And he's not scheduled to arrive until this afternoon. And uh, their summit, of course, takes place today and tomorrow. So I am hoping that um, Prime Minister Trudeau will generate as many headlines as President Joe Biden, as in my mind, all three North American countries are just as important. And in my mind, <clears throat> that's the way it should be. So now let us take a quick look at, uh, oh, what a great question, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, let us take a look at the weather first and, um, and we'll get on with the rest of the broadcast. Okay, holy shit moose, I can see the sun, says our snarky wet. Oh my God, it's 25 degrees, but humidity is in the 30s, 37% humidity. We have not seen something this low in like forever. Enough. 25 degrees, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 37% humidity. How wonderful is that? And of course, our weather forecast is clear through the day with a high of 28 and a low of 16. Tomorrow, Tuesday, clear through the day with a high of 28 and a low of 18. And then Wednesday is going to be another humid day with a high of 28 and a low of 18. And if you are, like I am, curious about your expressions, well, of course, I had to go find out what shit moose meant. And I quickly realized that shit moose is an insulting term to describe a fat, nasty bitch that you spot in a club. The term itself, when screamed, makes the person speaking it appear crazy, and the victim never realizes that they have been called out as being nasty, and this is what we learned today from the Urban Dictionary. Shit moves. That one is new to me. <laughs> Moving right along, before we get into some adventures, I wanted to tell you about this wonderful article uh, that I read this weekend, uh, written 
by Mexico News Daily correspondent Sarah Debris on the increasing number of people that are arriving in Mexico to stay from north of the border. There are a number of wonderful quotable phrases in the article having to do with being mindful of the fact that while many attempt to sell Mexico as an, as an inexpensive place to live, it's only inexpensive when you consider that you are arriving here from a different economy. She goes on to saying, and I quote, learn about the local economy when you land and don't vastly overpay for goods and services, she writes. You may think you're being extra generous, but the effect of too many people doing that is to price out everyone else, unwittingly turning many goods and services that most locals could access before into hard-to-have luxuries. If it, that sounds familiar, it's because it's happening here. And if that doesn't sound familiar, um, get out of your ostrich hole and read this article and um, consider it. Now, the last thing before we get into more local adventures, I wanted to share the fact that in case you care, the Golden Globes are back this week. The broadcast taking place tomorrow evening. I used to be a huge fan of the awards. Then things got strange for them during the pandemic and some controversies became public. But in this article in English by Vox, we learned that these scandals were all about... Uh, we, we learned what these scandals were all about and whether the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, the organization behind the awards, has redeemed itself or not. And that is what we have for news and headlines. I wanted to tell you of my wonderful adventure going to listen to my dear friend Zoe Lewis on her opening night at Encanto. As you know, I have loved Zoe for being such an eloquent storyteller and singer and songwriter. And she plays the piano and she plays the guitar and she plays the ukulele if I said that correctly. And of course, uh, she was outstanding. But with that said, you know, whenever I go see people that I love, and I've seen them a number of times, the feelings that go through my mind or the thoughts that go through my mind have to do with, um, you know, I love you. You're wonderful. I love your music. What are you playing today or what are you doing today that is new? And I am so happy to report that Zoe has put together a whole series of brand new songs to bring on this season. Of course, she sang a bunch of her favorites and highly requested songs. Of course, there is such a thing as her beautiful ode to Puerto Vallarta, her chili and lime song, which is fantastic. But she sang all kinds of new and wonderful songs. It is so wonderful to watch somebody go on stage and tell you a wonderful story. And then all of a sudden break into song about the story that was just told and add additional context to the song, uh, to the story rather, by way of the song itself. So it was a wonderful show. She had a couple of guests performing and she has announced that she's going to have different musical guests in all of her performances. So I can absolutely uh, recommend it wholeheartedly. And speaking of recommendations, I just wanted to give you a quick reminder that today I am going to be my dear friend Gouda Gabor's first guest. Not musical guest. I am going to be interviewed. I am not going to do anything. On I was not invited to do anything. I asked Gouda, should I prepare something? And she said, no, I'm just going to interview you, which is lovely. Uh, Gouda, of course, opens tonight with wine and cheese along with the wonderful, talented Mark Hartman. We talked about Mark a little bit last week. And um, and she is absolutely phenomenal, and I'm going to be there, of course. If there are tickets left to be had, you can find a discount if you buy them online by going online, and when you get to the checkout, you can write the word cheese where you get a discount coupon prompt and you get a little bit of a discount. And of course, in other news, last but not least, just a gentle reminder that our, our meet and greet is coming up on the 20th at, um, at Gina's wonderful restaurant, uh, Whiskey Kitchen. And of course, I also want to remind you that the following day, a few of us have purchased tickets to go see Amy Armstrong do her weed 
A Love Story, Confessions and Cannabis. This is going to be at Nacho Daddy on Saturday the 21st. And it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm happy to hear that some members of the cluster have already purchased tickets. And with that said, let us see what is on your mind this morning. Good mornings here and there. I love it. Uh, oh, no. Deb reports rain, rain, rain. Wish I was with all of you. Well, I should say that yesterday. No, when was it? Saturday, I took a short, unexpected adventure up to the mountains where it was all dusty. There is so much dust everywhere now that it has stopped raining. And of course, we wouldn't hurt if we had a little bit of the rain that Deb is reporting. Um, and that Albert is reporting as well, raining in Woodland Hills today. Uh, and hoping that tomorrow uh, the thunderstorms are not so bad so he can take off from LAX. Fantastic. Uh, let's see what else we have. <gasps> oh, wonderful, Karen. Good morning. I must thank you again, Paco, for background on Umbrellas of Cherbourg. I watched the movie. I need to watch it again. I loved it. You have just made my day, Karen, because it is a very special film. And indeed, it takes several watchings to, to get through it. Um, when we talked about this um, Somebody reported that it was available on HBO in the United States. Unfortunately, it is not available through HBO Mexico. But uh, if you have access to Umbrellas of Cherbourg, I strongly, strongly recommend it. Uh, let's see what else we see. More good mornings, more good mornings. Jeff is counting 23, 23 days to go. I love it. Uh, Joe is reporting on finishing both season of the White Lotus. I have to get into the second season and I know it's going to absorb me like a powerful sponge. I just haven't gone there just yet, but it is definitely on my list. Uh, let's see what else. Oh no, Kathy says that COVID decided to go pay her husband Mark a visit as well. I wish you a quick recovery to the both of you. COVID um, took uh, a dear friend of mine by surprise, but I am happy that uh, he is on the mend. He has now tested negative, and my beloved Eric is going to be my date tonight, and this would be Eric from uh, co-working hotel, the co-working hotel across the street from Encanto. We are going to have some important and fun news to share. Let's see what else we have. There's a question. Paco, it always brightens our day when we unexpectedly run into you during our travels. And yes, when was it? Saturday, Saturday, no, Friday afternoon, I ran into Dan and Kathy for lunch. And then, yes, uh, Saturday, Saturday night, I was surprised to see Dan and Kathy upstairs at Encanto enjoying Zoe Lewis. And I say surprised because, you know, Kathy is wheelchair bound and of course she can walk short distances and one day I asked her you know how do you fare with uh, with stairs and she says well I can go up a, a flight of stairs and that will take all my energy for the day and I applaud both Den and Kathy for being the adventurous spirits that they are even though Encanto is on the second story they went and even though uh, Nacho Daddy is on, is on a second story. They've already purchased uh, tickets to go see Amy with us on the 21st. So thank you for being such adventurous souls. And thank you for reminding me of how important it is to get beyond your own comfort circle from time to time. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh... The stretch down there at Pino Suarez and Badillo, and Badillo was so horrible. Well, hopefully it's these patches that they're doing will will stay and will take some time um, to it'll take some time to require such an intervention again. Doug asks, is it true that there will be a permanent ban on smoking in all bars and restaurants, even on patios? If true, there's is there a, st a start date? Well, Doug, here's a funny thing. There has been such a ban. And there has been such a ban for some times, for some time now. Uh, by law, you cannot smoke in restaurants and bars. And by law, well, 
you know, the patio thing is one of those really flexible things that a lot of businesses say, well, maybe yes, maybe no. I have been to patios where people smoke. I have been to patios where people are not allowed to smoke. Uh, so this is not new, I am afraid. By law, you are not supposed to do that. Uh, let's see what else. Logan's been following Dr. Jill's adventures on her Flotus Instagram page. Some fun content being shared over there. God bless her and God bless you, Logan, for finding the time to be so immersed in social media. I have no idea how you do it. Uh, Joe has been following some information as well, telling us that Prime Minister Trudeau was coming to Mexico City from his holiday in Jamaica. How wonderful is that? Uh, Sherry is going to be there tonight. I am looking forward to seeing you there. I've heard from a couple of other cluster members that are going to be present tonight. And that makes me very, very happy. Uh, let's see what else we have. A comment on what I was talking about earlier about people migrating to Mexico. I'm seeing many overpaying for rentals here in Bucerías and thus causing prices to go up, especially in the last year. Well, that is probably the most common example on how things get way too expensive for locals to afford. You try to get a good rental in Emiliano Zapata with a Mexican budget, forget about it. It just, it, they don't exist anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Lisa loves Zoe Lewis. Definitely will be a show. We will attend a show or two. That is wonderful. Um, let's see what else we have. There's another. Oh, no, that's not a cue. Um, but Dale. Oh, my goodness. Another one of my favorite adventure salts in this town. Dale was in Dusty San Sebastian and went all the way to La Bufa. La Bufa is the enormous mountain right behind uh, San Sebastián del Oeste. And when you climb up there, you can get there by car. On a clear day, you can see Marina Vallarta. You can see the ocean from La Bufa, but it's usually way too hazy for one to be able to do that. But I have seen the ocean from up there. Uh, let's see. Oh, Karen found Umbrellas of Cherbourg on YouTube. That is wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. And Joe warns me that White Lotus is much better in the second season. Um, I cannot even imagine how, because the first season was absolutely phenomenal. And this, my friends, brings us to the end of today's Coffee and Headlines. I have all afternoon to get all primed and proper for tonight at Encanto. I hope you have a wonderful week. I know that I have a bunch of things scheduled that I'm really looking forward to. Um, as of you, as for you, rather, stay happy, stay kind, stay in touch. Stay mindful of your surroundings, stay generous, and uh, come back soon. Have a great Monday.